What is going on YouTube world? My name is Jemima McKinney. Appreciate y'all for tuning in today. I be sure to like this video right now. Subscribe to my channel if you are new and want to join the parties. I do post a ton of great sports content pretty much almost every single day giving y'all great topics. Okay, today we are going to discuss who won and who lost the 2019 NFL Draft. The biggest winner of the NFL Draft of 2019 was in fact the Arizona Cardinals. I, they were able to trade Josh Rosen on day two, which was very, very key. They got some great value from him in, in the future, okay? They drafted Kyler Murray, number one, no surprise there. He might be the best dual threat quarterback we've ever seen coming into this draft, okay? He's, he's dynamic, okay? They also drafted Byron Murphy, cornerback out of Washington. That was an excellent, excellent pick. Byron Murphy has the best ball skills in the draft. They could have drafted Greedy Williams, but I think Byron Murphy fits them pretty well. They also drafted Andy Isabella and Hakeem Butler, okay? These were two Excellent, excellent picks. They already got Christian Kirk. They have Larry Fitzgerald. That wide receiver room is looking really good and really young outside Larry Fitzgerald. Hakeem Butler, who's the biggest steal in the draft. This guy is six foot six, ran a four point four eight forty yard dash for being six foot six. That's amazing. And Andy Isabella is one of the best possession wide receivers in this draft. He is amazing, blazing speed. He ran a four three one forty yard dash. That's amazing. Okay, they also added Zach Allen. You know who was a very very good edge rusher. He's actually very underrated considering the fact that there's so many great edge rushers and defensive players in this draft. They got him in the third round. He's going to be an excellent player for them. I really love that pick right there. Okay, they got Deontay Thompson in the fifth round. He might he was probably the safest pick at safety. Not saying he's the best safety in this draft, but you know, I've had some teams that looked at him and said that he was a first round pick, he's a second round pick. They got him in the fifth round, guys. That's an excellent pick. I love what the Cardinals did. Okay, but the biggest loser of the draft to me was in fact them New York football giants, okay? They, they just had a terrible draft, in my opinion. Now, look, I like some of their later picks, but it ultimately does not matter because their first round or two was just bad, okay? Drafting Daniel Jones number six overall was an absolute joke. Daniel Jones is legitimately not even a top 50 player in this draft. He's not overall player. He's the fifth best quarterback in this draft to me, okay? I think that Dwayne Haskins, Kyler Murray, Drew Locke, and Will Greer are all better than Daniel Jones. Make Basically, at best, the fourth best quarterback in this draft was drafted at number six overall. That, notice how after the Redskins drafted Dwayne Haskins, no other quarterback got drafted in the first round. So what does that tell you? Daniel Jones would have been there in the second round for you. Do what the Denver Broncos did. Go trade up for him in the second round if you need to. Do not do not pass over Josh Allen. Dave Gettleman said he wanted to take the best player available in the draft at the time. You know, he wanted to take the best player available. The best player available is Josh Allen. They passed him. They also drafted Dexter Lawrence in the first round. I like Dexter Lawrence, but the clear-cut pick was Montez Sweat at Mississippi State, the best player on the best defense in college football, okay? That was a terrible, it wasn't a terrible pick, but it was the wrong pick. And then they traded up in the first round to go get the third best cornerback at best, in my opinion, is DeAndre Baker. I mean, Byron Murphy and Greedy Williams, to me, are clear-cut better than DeAndre Baker. They traded up to go get him. They also did not really address their offensive line at all. The O'Sheen Sims pick was decent, but just overall not a great draft for the New York Giants. They did a terrible job maneuvering the draft. They did not get, they overreached for players. They went up and got players they shouldn't have got. It just was a bad draft, okay? And ultimately, listen, you can have some decent picks here and there, but if you get the quarterback wrong, it's over. And they got the quarterback wrong. Okay, a winner. The Washington Redskins. The Washington Redskins, the fact that they did not have to, you know, trade up to go get Dwayne Haskins, which is what teams thought they would need to do, is a huge, huge bonus, okay? They were able to get Dwayne Haskins at number 15 overall. He's probably the best quarterback in this draft to me, and a top 10 player in the draft, okay? Then they traded up to get Montez Sweat. Now they traded a couple, some picks for him. You know, I, I I would I wouldn't have gave up as much for him. But ultimately they lost Preston Smith this year, so they needed some defensive help on that edge. On that edge, you know, their their edge rushers are kind of getting old. Montez Sweat's one of the five best players in this draft. Okay, and they were eight, five six play, best players in the draft. They were able to get him at like number twenty five. I mean, that's amazing that they got. Him. That's a steal at number twenty five. Okay. Then they went out and drafted Terry McLaurin in the third round. Now, I thought they should have drafted Akeem Butler. They could have went after some other receivers you know there were some better receivers than Terry McLaurin but Terry McLaurin fits I think what they want to do okay and they at least drafted a need okay they went for a need then they were able to get Kelvin Harmon in the sixth round this guy was a second round pick to me they need to address the wide receiver position they did it with two great picks for where they got him you know that was great value they also were able to draft Bryce Love who you know he he was projected to possibly be the best running back in this class but you know he got hurt you know had a down year at Stanford the senior year if he's healthy he's one of the di most dynamic players in this draft you know and Adrian Peterson's getting old you compare him with um Darius guys once he gets back healthy from the ACL injury I love what the Redskins did Bryce Love could be a 
steal. Calvin Harmon is a steal. And Terry McLaurin, D Dwayne Haskins, and Montez Sweat are excellent picks. Okay, a loser. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Listen, Devin White was an excellent pick. I love that pick. I had, I had Devin White mocked to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think Devin White is the second best player behind um, Quentin Williams in this draft. Nick Bosa's third for me. Okay, give you a gauge of what I'm thinking. Okay, but that was a great pick. But other than that, they had a, they did not have a very good draft in my opinion. They did absolutely nothing to address their offensive line. I don't think they even drafted an offensive lineman. If they did, it was a sixth or seventh round pick. Okay, they did, did nothing to address the offensive line. Okay, and they picked, they passed on Greedy Williams in the second round. They drafted Sean Bunting. Okay, out of Central Michigan. Now I like him. He's a decent player, but he is no Greedy Williams. They drafted Jamel Dean. Okay, that was a decent pick, but he's not gonna be your number one corner. Greedy Williams could have easily solved that number one corner void for them next year. He'd been there. He would have been their best corner next year, and they passed on him. Okay, and they also could have definitely used a running back, and they did not use a single pick on a running back. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers are losers in the 2019 NFL Draft. Okay, now another now a winner. The Seattle Seahawks. They came into the draft with four draft picks. Okay, four four draft picks. They ended up picking 11 players. Okay, they did an amazing job trading down with teams, getting a ton of great picks. And listen, Pete Carroll and this coaching staff does not need a ton of top 10 picks. Okay, they were, they've shown the ability to develop players like Bobby Wagner, the the Russell Wilsons, the KJ Wrights, Doug Baldwin's undrafted. Richard Sherman was a fifth round pick back when he was with Seattle. Now LJ Coolier was a solid pick for where they got him. Okay, and based on who was off the board. Okay, so they filled the void from Frank Clark, who they just recently traded. I mean, he had a great senior year. He had 11 and a half tackles for loss and about six and a half sacks like this senior year, so he's really coming into his own. They got DK Metcalf with the last pick of the second round. That's an absolute steal. DK Metcalf has the most potential out of any wide receiver in this draft. And to me, I understand that he ran a slower three cone show than Tom Brady, but you look at him, you know, he's a great jump ball wide receiver. You know, he he can get vertical. He's a, he's just a big play his big playability. Six foot four wide receivers that are 230 that that run a 4.31 four yard dash do not grow on trees. And DK Metcalf to me is the best wide receiver in this draft. They also got Gary Jennings, I believe in the fourth round. That's an excellent pick. He's a very under, underrated wide receiver. I think he's going to fit in very nice. You know, the wide, the wide receiver room for Seattle is looking really good with Doug Baldwin, with Doug Baldwin, Tyler Lockett, you know, DK Metcalf, and now Gary Jennings. That's, they also got Marcus Blair from Utah, who's a great pick. You know, I think he's a very aggressive safety. He's a second round pick to me. I think he fills the void that KJ, um, the, not KJ, I'm sorry, Cam Chancellor, you know, now that he's retired and gone, I think that fills a void. You can also play him at free safety. He's very good versatility. They also got the Marcus Christmas, a great defensive tackle out of Florida State in the sixth round. I think he's a very, very good player. He could potentially develop into a starter for them. So I really like, I really love that. Uh, I'm going to shift to a lo another loser, okay? The New Orleans Saints. The New Orleans Saints, to me, really have one issue. Saints have absolutely no wide receivers that can take a top off a of defense. And this draft was full of those players. And they drafted none. The New Orleans Saints defense was one of the top five defenses this year, okay? And they, they, were, they were not the problem. They were not the reason they did not win the Super Bowl. The reason was that Drew Brees and that offense faded at the end of the year, okay? They did. They were not a top 10 offense at the end of the year. They were just not a great offense. And it was because they were getting more gimmicky. It was a dink and dunk offense. They don't have very many players that can take a top off of the defense. And they don't have very many great speedy playmakers. And this draft was full of them. And they drafted Ch Chauncey Carter Johnson, who I like, but they definitely should have took a wide receiver there. They did nothing to address their offense. They also failed to replace Mark Ingram, who was a key component to their team last year. They really, really messed up in this draft. The Saints did, and their window's closing, okay? All right, the Denver Broncos. The Denver Broncos pretty much did the exact opposite of the New York Giants. They had an excellent draft, okay? They traded down, you know, and got an excellent player, no fit. They saw that they, the players on their board were not worth a number 10 overall pick. And they traded down to number 20 and got one of the 12 best players in the draft. No offense, an excellent tight end. He ran a 4.53 4-yard dash. He's an excellent player. He'll be a great weapon for Joe Flacco. They went out and drafted Dalton Reisner. That was an excellent pick. I love him. He, you know, he's a great talent. You know, he's a great athlete at the offensive tackle position. He's very versatile. I like him as an offensive lineman, okay? And then they also went out and drafted the hair parents to Joe Flacco and Drew Locke in the second round. And Drew Locke had first round talent. He's better than Daniel Jones, okay? The Denver Broncos did an excellent job of maneuvering this draft and went out and got their future, okay? They also went out and drafted Draymond Jones, who can definitely help them in the defensive tackle position. My bet is he can, he's going to start next year. They got him in the third round. That was a great pick. 
I think they definitely should have drafted a cornerback because they need cornerback depth. But I love what the Denver Broncos did. They had an excellent draft. Okay, okay another winner. The Pittsburgh Steelers. Pittsburgh Steelers. I love what they did. Trading up to get Devin Bush was absolutely excellent. Okay, they needed a hit. They needed playmakers. Okay, on the defensive side of the ball. They need to win now. They're in win now mode. They went out and drafted a great, great player in Devin Bush. Devin Bush is one of the 15 best players in this draft. And they got him at number 10. That's pretty good. You know, it definitely feels a need. I love the Justin Lane pick too. Justin Lane's an excellent corner. You know, he, he's a sleeper. You know, he had 15 pass breakups in the final year at Michigan State. He definitely can come in and start for them. They need some defensive back help. They got it. They also went and drafted Benny Snell, who might have been one of the top three running backs in this draft. They got him in like the fourth or fifth round, okay? He's an excellent player. He's a great compliment to James Conner. The Pittsburgh Steelers are going to be much, much more balanced this year, okay, in offense. I think they threw the ball way too much last year. They also added Zach Gentry in the draft, which is a great tight end. You know, he's a sleeper. I really love what the Steelers did. They are a winner in this draft, okay? My final loser is the, and the final team I'm going to talk about is the Atlanta Falcons, okay? Listen, the Atlanta Falcons, it's great. You know, you can clearly see what they're wanting to do. They want to protect Matt Ryan and prolong his career, which is great. I love that. But to spend your first two picks on offensive linemen and then to not get a great, impactful defensive player in this draft with so much talent, and the Falcons had one of the bottom five defenses last year. I consider that a huge disappointment. And the fact they traded back into the first round to draft another offensive lineman when they already got one at, like, number 14, I think that was a mistake because this draft is full of great offensive linemen. It's a deep offensive line draft, okay? And then when your best, the best, when your defense was bottom five last year, and I understand they had injuries last year, that was one of the main reasons, but they still needed help even with the injuries, okay? When the best defensive player you can get is Kendall Sheffield, who really has nothing but speed as a project. I like Kendall Sheffield. I think he, he I think he can develop into a solid starter. But when he's your best defensive player that you get in a loaded defensive draft, that is considered a huge L, okay? But that's pretty much a wrap for this video. Be sure to like this video right now. Share it with friends. Tell me if I'm right. Tell me where I'm wrong. You know, who won this draft? Who lost this draft? It's been your boy, Jamal McKinney. And... I'm Ghost, have a blessed day y'all, and GO PACKERS! Woo!